In the last week of June, the websites of three groups, Let India Breathe, There Is No Earth Be, and Fridays for Future were banned. The three groups have been encouraging people to write to Prakash Javdekar and the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change, expressing their objection to the Environmental Impact Assessment Draft Notification 2020. And people did listen. We have no, we have no formal uh, letter or details about why this happened. Uh, but of course, looking at uh, what, what happened with both Fridays for Future and there is no RP, it is definitely about EIA campaign. How important this EIA must be that the government of India felt the need to ban these sites and book them under the infamous Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Environment Impact Assessment is a legal process which first came into existence in January 1994. All it does is, it assesses the impact a project can have on the environment of a region. This can be any project like mining, hydro power, thermal power, infrastructure projects like roads, etc. It's important to note that these companies are required to take prior permission from the Environment Ministry before they can even begin these projects. Currently, we are governed by the EIA 2006. According to this, a project goes through four levels of scrutiny. One, screening, where the type and the chosen location is screened. Two, scoping, where the project is assessed on the basis of potential impact and its range as well as how it can be mitigated and monitored. Three, public consultation, where members of public, environmental groups and other experts will be consulted. Finally, appraisal, where the expert appraisal committee will take a detailed look at the project. The final seal of approval will be given by the Ministry of Environment based on the final report of the experts. The EIA 2020 is going to introduce certain amendments to this 2006 notification which has alarmed environmentally conscious citizens and activists across the country. One of the most contentious parts of this notification is the post facto approval of projects. If EIA 2020 comes to pass, a company can very well begin a project or expand its current project without prior environmental clearance. In other words, they can come back later and get the required permission. Their violations get legitimized. The EIA 2020 also exempts many projects like solar power projects, manufacturing units of explosive detonators, etc. that are marked under defense or strategic projects, certain mining projects including coal, minerals and sand from clearance. More importantly, it cuts down the minimum time duration required for public to send their response from 30 days to 20 days. Imagine this, a dam takes about 10 years to plan, about you know more 7-8 years to build, but a public hearing for a dam in a pristine area like say for that matter the Bang Valley or somewhere in the Himalayas will give people only 20 days to speak about it. So that's completely wrong, people have been living there for hundreds of years. Of course. And when the government brings about a change to existing law, it becomes the duty of the government to ensure that the information reaches every citizen. But the government has failed to do that too and has even reportedly misled the Karnataka High Court. Most importantly, the EIA 2020 may be in violation of the Environmental Protection Act of 1986. The parliament in its wisdom enacted the Environment Protection Act, keeping in mind the Stockholm uh, declarations now, even with respect to rules, which are called a subordinate legislation, if something is not in compliance with the parent act, it falls foul of law. Now this notification is enabling clearances and not is diluting every little protection that the parent act insists upon. Both central and state governments are obligated to protect the environment under the 48A of the constitution. However, the government seems to be failing in its constitutional duty. There is some misconception as far as I can see in the government that conservationists are all anti-development. But there are good scientists, good ecologists, good conservationists who, are, who will be happy to advise the government on how to balance this whole equation of ensuring development without affecting or uh, conservation or ensuring that conservation imperatives are also taken care of. But if such advice is not sought by the uh, Niti Aayog and the government and 
only a bureaucratic view is taken it will be a tragic situation for the country to be in